Thank you, fellas. So glad that's true. Amen. Have your Bibles with you this evening. We're going to be reading from the book of Job. Book of Job, chapter 24. I'm sorry, chapter 42. <laughs> if you're able, stand and read from chapter 42 of the book of Job. When you don't catch those mistakes that you need to be on the lookout on. Chapter 42, we'll begin reading at verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought or purpose can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eyes see thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. Specifically, want to use verse 2 as a text for this evening where he says, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought or purpose can be withholden from thee. If your Bible's open there, may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let's bow our heads. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Would you speak to us from it tonight? And for that, we'll thank you. Amen. You may be seated. I can't think of anything that will make a bigger difference in your perspective toward life than if you get it in your head that our God truly does reign over everything. I was going to tell Wayland to sing that song, and I forgot. And so I guess great minds think alike because he sang that song, Our God Reigns. But do you really, truly believe it when it comes to your life? Yep. We know God reigns over the earth, but do we believe that he reigns over our lives? Amidst Job's confession in these verses this evening, he acknowledges something very deep about God. There in verse 2 he says, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. I like the way the New King James translates that even better. It says, no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. It better explains what Job is, trying, Job is trying to say there about God. He was saying that not only does God reign, and because He reigns, nothing would keep Him from seeing His purposes fulfilled. Now if God reigns over your life, you too can be assured that nobody or no thing will be able to keep God's purposes from being fulfilled in your life. Now we say we believe that, and we claim that God is running our lives, but so often the first little setback that comes along causes us to fret and worry, Instead of trust and obey, and we start to worry and we start to say, well, what if this happens? Or what if that happens? Well, what if it does? 
Didn't Job say that if God reigns over your life, nothing would keep God from seeing His purposes fulfilled in your life? That's exactly what he was saying. Job was pre impressed with God's incomparable power. Nothing, he says, is beyond God's ability. And so if that is true, God can do anything that He plans to do with your life if you'll just trust it. Ray Steadman tells of a time when he was preaching in a Methodist church in England. They were singing the chorus to that hymn we sang tonight, Our God Rang. But on the song sheet that they were using to sing from, the person that had typed up that chorus had made an error on the sheet and had entitled the song, Our God Resigned. Put an S in there where it shouldn't have been. Now many times as Christians, we act more like our God has resigned than we act like He reigned. Our God has not resigned. Our God reigns. Amen. We must show it on our faces. We must let it be heard with our actions and with our voices. Samuel Logan Brendel, I'm sure many of you will remember, was a commissioner for the Salvation Army in their early days. Salvation Army, just in case you didn't know, is a holiness church. At least it's supposed to be. That's why some of you keep asking me, how come we have all these Salvation Army guys writing in our devotionals? Well, they use our devotionals and what have you, and they're a sister holiness church. My dad didn't know that recently when I told him it was a church, much less a holiness church, even though he and mom regularly give the Salvation Army money, he didn't know he was actually giving it to a holiness church. Well, Brendel was one of the best spokesmen that the Salvation Army had in those days for holiness. I always read anything I can get my hands on that Brendel wrote. Matter of fact, I'm usually more anxious to read something that somebody wrote a hundred years ago than I am of reading something that somebody read today. You can trust it more. I have in my library a little book that Brendel wrote entitled Helps to Holiness. I didn't know it until recently, but he wrote other even smaller books than the one I have in my library. And why I mention this is that I learned from a devotional that I read from Dr. Dennis Kinlaw that there was an interesting story behind all those little books that Brengel wrote that I never knew about. Here's what Dr. Kinlaw wrote about Brengel and those little books. He said, Brengel was a brilliant young preacher whom God led into the Salvation Army. He became the Salvation Army's great spokesman for the message of personal holiness. One night, a drunken man continually interrupted a service that Brengel was leading. Finally, Brengel put the man outside the service. <clears throat> After the meeting was over, Brengel was the last one to leave. So he turned the lights out and stepped into the street. The drunken man was waiting for him. He struck one side of Brengel's head with a paving stone and smashed the other side of his head against the building. Samuel Brangle was in the hospital for an extended period of time, hovering between life and death. 
When he finally began to recover, it was a long time before he could resume his former activities, so the editor of the Salvation Army's magazine asked him to write some articles while he was recuperating in the hospital. Those little books, which have profoundly shaped the lives of many Christian leaders, were the fruit of that terrible thing that happened that night. And now, what's my point in reading that? My point is that we need to believe what Job said. And to believe that if we have given our life to the Lord, that He in turn is running our life. The devil and people and sickness and anything in a whole host of other things can try to disrupt God's plans for our life. But God's in control if we put Him in control. Whether you find yourself waiting in a hospital or in a prison cell, like the Apostle Paul was when he wrote a number of the books of the Old Testament or any place else where you might find yourself. You believe that. We wouldn't have any of those wonderful little books that have touched so many lives over the years that Brendel wrote if that drunk had not hit him in the head with that rock that night. And he laid in the hospital for weeks on end. But yet God took something terrible and accomplished His purposes through Brendel's life through that terrible thing that happened to him. Well, if you believe that, then why do you worry about what's going on in your life? If you've given your life to the Lord, God will and He can use the circumstances that you find yourself in, even if they look like bad circumstances, to accomplish His purposes. And He can work His purposes from what might look like a disaster. He can produce fruit in your life when it looks like no fruit could possibly come out of that thing. Job says, no purpose of his can be withheld from him. We should believe that. We claim we do. We sing, our God reigns. Do we believe it? I came across something that A.W. Tozer wrote real recently. And if it's got A.W. Tozer's name, I always read it. I always know it's something going to be good, but when I read this one, it really spoke to me. He said, matter of fact, I come home and told Linda this as soon as I read it. He said, if God gives you a few more years, remember, it is not yours. Your time must honor God. Your activity must honor God. And everything you do must honor God. Now, that spoke to my situation. But I see no reason why it shouldn't speak to every single one of us this evening, no matter what age we are. Our time, our activity, what we're about, must honor God. If we really claim that He is the Lord of our life. And if we do indeed serve that God that reigns over the universe, well, how can we get away with not making everything we do try to honor Him? 
Otherwise, we have little respect for or show little dedication to the God that does reign. But if times get tough, we have a tendency to think more on our circumstances than we do to think on our God who reigns. We are often like the Israelites when they got to the Red Sea. The water was before them. Pharaoh's army was behind them. Sometimes we get ourselves into situations like that and we do not know where to turn or what to do. But then the Word of God comes to us like it did to them through Moses. This is what Moses said to them in Exodus 14, 13. He said, Fear ye not. You notice how so many times when you hear something from God, that's the way it starts. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show to you today. Now they found out that day as they experienced one of the greatest miracles perhaps of all time and incidentally I believe wholeheartedly God parted the Red Sea. It wasn't up at the upper end where it's only about this high. God actually parted the Red Sea and they walked across it on bare ground and they found out that their God did indeed reign and that like Job said, no purpose of His could be withheld from them. God didn't take them out of Egypt to drown them in the Red Sea nor to let Pharaoh slaughter them there on the, the side of the Red Sea. God took them out of Egypt to get them into the promised land because he had a purpose for them. And no matter what's there to try to stop God's purposes, if God has a purpose for you, he'll make a way for it to get done. Trust in your God. He can even open a way through your Red Sea if need be. And incidentally, there are worse things than water that try to stop us. A lot worse things than water. C.S. Lewis wrote, hardships often prepare ordinary people for extraordinary destiny. Hardships often prepare ordinary people for extraordinary destiny. But you know you're going to live your whole life and never do anything out of the ordinary if you lose sight of the fact that your God reigns. Live your whole life. Never do anything out of the ordinary if you lose sight of that fact. When we have nowhere to turn but to Him, we can trust Him to go before us like the Israelites did and trust Him to be our rear guard. So we need to ask ourselves if our life is confidently proclaiming that our God reigns in spite of whatever difficulties you may be experiencing in your own life. We all experience them. Psalm 47 verse 8 declares, God reigneth over the heathen, meaning God reigns over all the nations. God sitteth upon the throne of His holiness. We should let our lives proclaim 
that we know that to be a fact. We do, don't we? Now, we often use the phrase that God is in control as we think about what we're talking about tonight. It's an easy slogan to use, we use, sometimes when things go wrong. Well, God's in control. But what does that mean? Does that mean that God controls every decision, every event, every single thing that happened? Muslims believe that nothing happens without the direct intervening hand of Allah willing it to be so. So they always say no matter what happens, Allah must have willed that to be so. But as Christians, we don't believe that. Nope. Do we? Nope. We hold firmly to this notion of this thing called free will. So how does God's sovereignty and human free will, how do those two interact? Well, first of all, God reigns and He controls things, but God does not control us. He does not give us free will and then take it away from us when we give our life to Him. He does not control us. And secondly, even though God reigns, not everything that happens is God's will. And the quicker you will learn that, the better off you will be. If everything that ever happened on earth was God's will, like the Muslim says, Allah must have willed that. Well, if everything that happens on the earth was God's will, then there would be no need to pray, as Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6.10. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus told us that we were supposed to pray that His will would be done on earth. Now even though I myself sometimes use that phrase, I sometimes think that using the phrase God is in control sometimes can be a little dangerous. Mm -hmm. You see, it can lead us to blame God for everything. It can lead us to blame God for things that He didn't have anything to do with. It can keep us from taking responsibility for our own actions. So, if I drink myself silly during my pregnancy and my baby is born with a disability as a result, was God in control of that? Nope. Hardly. Nope. God didn't put the bottle to her mouth and force it down her throat. It would be easy to ask if God is in control, why did I get cancer? That'd be very easy to ask. Lots of people ask that. But I'm not going there. I made up my mind a long time ago. I wasn't going there. Nor am I going to blame God for my cancer. If I choose to buy a new Porsche, and then I can't pay my bills so that I have to go bankrupt. Was God in control of that? No. 
again, hardly. It's not God's will that you be poor. Poor people are always making poor decisions, though. Most of the time, you'll discover, unless there's a terrible sickness of some kind, a lot of people are behind the eight ball, so to speak, because they they're always spending money they don't have for things they don't need. What did God have to do with any of that? Your own selfish greed got you into that. God didn't have to have nothing to do with it. So I sometimes wonder if we shouldn't rework that statement to say instead of God is in control, to say that the God that reigns is always good. And that He is able to bring good out of any situation that we find ourselves in if we just trust Him. Even the ones we sometimes get ourselves into, God can sometimes bring good out of even those situations. If we will just simply trust Him. And like Job said, if God is indeed reigning in our lives, Nothing or nobody will be able to keep God's purposes from being fulfilled in our lives. I hope you remember that story about Brindle and the drunk and the stone. Uh, God didn't have that drunk smack him with a stone. God didn't put him in the hospital. God didn't make him to the point where he was almost dead. But God got at work while he laid in that hospital bed and still used him for his glory from that bed to fulfill his purposes for the world. Mm -hmm. And think of the people that those books helped that bring the world. And even when things happen that I don't understand, and I know, I don't know about you, but everything that happens to me, I don't sit down and say, well, I understand that. Mm -hmm. I sit down sometimes and say, Lord, I don't understand what's going on here. But even when things happen that I don't understand, here we are back to Romans 8:28. And it still rings true. We know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. Amen. To them who are the called according to His purpose. God doesn't cause all those things. But the God who reigns can take control of all those things that we don't understand and use Him for His good and even for our good. Our God does indeed reign. Can you be content and believe that when it comes time to applying it to your life and your circumstances and what is ahead for you, can you be content and simply trust Him through whatever's ahead and believe that somehow God is going to use maybe even what looks like a terrible thing in your life for his good, maybe even for your good. Now, that's not the easiest thing in the world. 
to do. Trust me, I've been there and done that, and it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, to always believe that. But if you can get a handle on this God that reigns, and that won't allow His purposes from being fulfilled in your life, like Job said, you can get a hold on that. Well, even in those parts of life that don't make sense, they will start to make a little more sense than what they did. And you'll begin to see the hand of God even in stuff that you never dreamed that God was involved in. That you thought the devil was doing something to you. That God is leaving things happen to you. Why is this happening to me? And here... God is working through it in ways that you never could even imagine. Oh, well, go home and think on that tonight. Ponder it a little bit. Roll it around through your mind a little bit. Even tune into YouTube again this week and watch it again if you didn't get it. Because it needs to, it needs to get embedded in your thinking. Because I guarantee you, Things are going to happen and you're going to say, what in the world's going on? What's happening? Why is this happening, God? Why did you let this happen, God? Careful, that's dangerous ground to go. Dangerous place to be. You want to be on the side that's saying, my God reigns and I believe he can help me through whatever's happening and he can work out his purposes in my life even through what's happening. You believe that, say amen. 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 I believe you. Let's stand. Let's join our hearts together in a closing word of prayer. And if you're in some kind of a situation like that this evening, maybe not as drastic as what Samuel Logan Brendel was, but if you're in a situation like that, you're trying to make some sense out of it, just sit back and trust God. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to understand it all. But believe that somehow God is going to work good from this. And that God is going to fulfill His purposes even in your life as things pan out down the road. Join together in a closing word of prayer. Bill, would you please dismiss us? Our precious Heavenly Father, once again, we call on you, precious name of Jesus. Lord, there isn't anything that we could do that would please you more than totally trusting you. Not just saying it with the head, but saying it with the heart. And re, re, it, 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 reciting those words, our God reigns, regardless of what happens in the world. We can see what's going on in the world, which is uh, taking many uh, turns and twists, and many people are following, following for, for uh, everything that is happening to be the right thing. Lord, your word declared that they would say wrong is right and right is wrong. And Father, we pray that we would keep our thoughts and our minds and our attitudes on you because you do reign. You do what you say you will do. We haven't found anything that you said negative about what you were doing, Lord. And we pray that you would bless throughout this night. Help us to keep our keep our eyes fixed on you and uh, your word. Help us to keep our nose pointed in in your word, and help us to keep our eyes fixed on the eastern sky. Because we don't know when this will come come to pass. When we will have to say, say the final word. You will be in your grave. We pray your blessings.
that are here tonight, bless you out tonight. And above all, Lord, bless the days that lie ahead for all that you do. We'll give you 